Wanda, hmm. no one dislikes you, Wanda. <laughs> Scarlet Witch has shown herself capable, and even more so as of late, holding her own against Marvel heavyweights and easily handling the onslaught of godlike beings and sometimes even actual gods. Unfortunately, this can attract very formidable villains whose elaborately designed plans test your mind, your will, and push our heroes to the brink of their sanity. And though some battles have proven more punishing than others, Wanda has ultimately persevered. Here, we'll take a look at some of the most challenging foes the Scarlet Witch has ever faced. Well, better get going. <laughs> Hailing from Atlantis, I am Mr. Namor the Submariner was one of the first Marvel characters ever published, dating back to 1939. Gifted with superhuman speed, strength, and the ability to speak to all the fishes in the sea, his powers are what you might imagine of a typical Atlantean. And due to his longevity within the comics, he has had many years to come into contact with heroes, villains, forge alliances, make enemies, and make more enemies. His personality can be a bit abrasive, but he seems to get along just fine with Doctor Doom. Sometimes. Along his journeys, he one day came to possess the power of the Phoenix, an indestructible cosmic entity with the ability to lend portions of its power to its hosts. He eventually falls into conflict while possessed with this power with the Avengers, whose combined attacks had almost no effect. It wasn't until Scarlet Witch appears and saves the day, casting out the Phoenix Spirit and finally banishing him from her presence with the simple utterance, Go away. Ah yes, Ahab the quote-unquote scientist, a geneticist from Earth 811 in league with the Sentinels of the Days of Future Past timeline, a time traveler and heavily alluded to practitioner of what Sigmund Freud calls the most significant of all perversions. He's a powerful and strange villain who tracks down mutants, chains and collars them, whips them into subservience, and then calls them his hounds. But he is able to manipulate and control the power of these modified mutants, and he has been able to hold his ground against fairly powerful hero teams alone. So I guess there must be some method to his madness. Oh, Facing Ahab alone, he proves difficult to beat, but with the combined might of Scarlet Witch, fellow Avengers, and members of the X-Men, they were able to finally best this creepy foe. A recurring foe for Wanda that may not have the raw strength needed to contend with the reality warper, but makes up for it with his cunning and experience, has to be Magneto. Magneto and Scarlet Witch's complicated relationship has been littered with strife throughout the years. In her eyes, he may be her father, he may not be her father, he may just be a father figure, and sometimes he's just a plain old villain. And though he may have a somewhat callous temperament towards most of his enemies, any conflicts involving what he perceives as his daughter has caused him to slightly pull his punches, and vice versa. Wanda is often conflicted with her feelings towards battling Magneto, but when push comes to shove, Scarlet Witch has been able to break through this mental barrier and face the master of magnetism. When Magneto summoned an impenetrable field of magnetic particles to shield himself while battling Quicksilver and the Witch, Wanda uses her reality warping hex powers to turn the shield into a field of flowers, allowing her brother to land a powerful strike. Familial relationships can be trying, especially when those family members quite literally have the power to threaten the entire world when they are upset. These time-traveling bad guys are always causing such issues for the dimensions they inhabit. Luckily for the heroes, they tend to have very specific gimmicks or codes of ethics they compulsively adhere to. Otherwise, they would be near invincible. Mm, that's the gambit! Immortus is one of these characters. With no real powers of his own, but ridiculous technology from the future and extraordinary knowledge, he seeks to rule all reality. He's seen everything, he knows everything. It's complicated, okay? So whenever he encounters powerful beings that may eventually become rivals to him, he begins to meddle. Scarlet Witch falling for the vision was a part of one of his plans. Deducing no children would come from this marriage, he believed the children of the witch would become much too powerful 
so his intervention was needed. His plans didn't unfold exactly as he'd hoped, as Wanda was able to see through his subtle manipulations and reject them. A win for Wanda, but this persistent time meddler has a tendency to return, and usually with a different name and appearance. I've lived a million lifetimes. Tony Stark to his core has always been an explorer, an inventor, a curious mind that sometimes runs wild and makes decisions for the rest of humanity. Typical Iron Man stuff. And this was one of those times. After attempting to destroy the Phoenix entity by firing a giant laser at it, the being broke into five equal pieces. The same cosmic entity that possessed Namor the Submariner also possessed four other heroes bestowing them power but unstable power. The conflicts that arose between the Phoenix Five and the Avengers was one that had the Avengers on the losing side. And Spider-Man, poor Spider-Man, he really did his best. But the beatdown he receives at the hand of an overpowered Phoenix-possessed Colossus His wit until the end was what saved him during this dire situation. It takes the confined might of Scarlet Witch and Hope Summers to successfully banish the Phoenix spirit, exercising the remnants of the Phoenix being from the Five with the words, No more Phoenix. The Eternal One, the First One, a thousands of years old being worshipped as a god by entire ancient civilizations, but in reality he's just a mutant albeit a capable one, and one of the first to fully manifest the X-Gene that gives a mutant their powers. Shape-shifting, telepathy, teleportation, immortality, superhuman physicality, there really is no way to stop him for long, unless you simply have the ability to ride him out of existence, which Wanda Maximoff nearly did. Apocalypse only survives the decimation of mutant kind by a Scarlet Witch who had lost control, Due to a technicality, his soul was scattered across space and time, but without the ability to truly expire, he waited for resurrection. And when he finally does make his way back, the world he awakens to is nearly devoid of all mutants. When reality warpers lose control, it spells trouble for us all, even the immortals. Ultron has a few different backstories, but the MCU version is the one we're all the most likely to be familiar with. Created primarily by Tony Stark to keep the peace, our fears of a Terminator-style artificial intelligence future monster were nearly realized. All it took to completely corrupt this program was a single look at the internet, and all compassion for humanity immediately flew out the window. The sad thing is, the conclusion of this AI program upon viewing the internet for the first time is almost almost understandable. The next step the program took was a bit drastic, deciding to eradicate humanity from the face of the earth, when simply designing a more efficient recycling system could have been a better first step. After the Battle of Sokovia, Wanda rips the metal core heart of Ultron from his vibranium chest in an act of revenge for the loss of her brother during the conflict. Similarly, in the comics, it was her power that was able to pierce Ultron's armor and allow the rest of the Avengers to finish him off. Within the negative zone resides a bug man. But not just any old run of the mill bug man. This one has ambition and the power to back it up. His name is Annihilus the Annihilator. A bit of a repetitive title, but deserved, as he is recognized by Thanos as a near equal. With an external skeleton, also known as an exoskeleton, and the superhuman abilities of strength, speed, stamina, and intelligence, he was already a formidable villain. Add to that the cosmic control rod, and he is one of the most powerful beings in the entire universe. The Earth will belong to Annihilus! His threat proves difficult to combat, especially for Scarlet Witch, as his foreign insect-like negative zone anatomy causes her hex powers to lose their effectiveness. With the added help of the Fantastic Four, the Avengers have been able to beat back this threat. But there is usually some trickery involved, since a straight physical confrontation tends to skew in the Nihilus' direction. Dr. Victor Von Doom. Combine vast intelligence and mastery over the human sciences with sorcery skills to such a high degree that the title of Sorcerer Supreme is also within your grasp. And you have Doom. 
Doom has been one of the most dire and dangerous foes for the Scarlet Witch, using his manipulative abilities to brainwash her into fighting the Avengers and even into becoming his fiance. She was eventually able to break from his control. Seeking pure revenge, she fiercely attacks Doom, knocking him out with one magical strike. It would have been over for Victor if it had not been for the intervention of her own family members. This created enough of a diversion for the Doctor to make his villainous escape. The iconic Mad Titan. A villain so strong he beats the Hulk in hand-to-hand -hand combat and scares him into hiding for an entire movie. Soundly beating the good guys, he successfully retires as a victorious general of war, seamlessly transitioning into the life of a peaceful alien potato farmer. However, we've been seeing a trend in the power Scarlet Witch is able to muster when she's angry, and you wouldn't like her when she's angry. In Avengers Endgame, she not only holds off Thanos' attacks, forcing him to the ground, but almost completely crushes him in his own battle armor. Without his backup, this could very well have been the first end of Thanos. This demon will grant your wish, but there's always a catch. Mephisto, the omnipotent Hell Lord that loves Faustian bargains. Interfering with the lives of mortals and mutants seems to be a favorite pastime of his, binding beings to terrible deals with no escape. He may not always come into direct contact with our favorite heroes, but he may be the secret grand orchestrator of all the ills that befall you. Mephisto had a hand to play in the mystical births of Wanda Maximoff's children. The consequences of this was the beginning of a sequence of events that led to the near destruction of all mutant kind. This left the Scarlet Witch broken and alone, but she did not succumb completely to the supernatural manipulator of fate and was eventually able to help rebuild the world she had caused such destruction in and overall was forgiven by her friends and teammates. His name may be popular in association with Doctor Strange, especially since when we last saw him, he was trapped within a time loop and then banished by the sorcerer. I've come to bargain! Dormammu has had his run-ins with the Avengers, but being the primordial magic entity that he is, physical battle is not always the wisest way to engage him. After proving more than a match for the majority of the Avengers, it was Wanda who was the last one courageously standing against this near omnipotent foe. Using the last of her power and placing everything she had in one final hex blast to stop him, Dormammu was sucked into the interior of the dangerous evil eye artifact. Chaos is a very specific magic that Scarlet Witch was not born with access to. It is not a source of power that originates from mutations. It is a force from a specific realm, and that realm belongs to Gathone. He is an elder god born billions of years ago who ruled the earth for millions of years. Gathone became versed in the magic of the universe and created a new dimension for himself, the Flickering Realm. Scarlet Witch was specifically chosen by Gathone to manifest his power as one of his avatars. She was to be used as a vessel for him to return. In a battle where she teams up with Doctor Doom, they face this powerful demon. Wanda is able to fully assimilate and master the Elder God Demon into herself, making her even more powerful. She made sure to warn her fellow Avengers that if she falls in battle, Cthone may return. An interdimensional cosmic ruler and king amongst gods, omnipotent and able to exist in multiple dimensions and realities at once, just his presence alone can destroy galaxies. But when he is not destroying galaxies, you may be able to find him hosting his favorite Japanese game show. This, once again, is a foe best left to magicians and sorcerers. Through the many manifestations of this godlike starfish monster, one notable battle took place with Wanda, Strange, and a few other Avengers that did successfully defeat him. But ruler of a hundred dimensions that he is, probably just soul switched back to his Japanese game host self and continued the day basking in the glory of his adoring fans. Still, we can chalk this up to a win for Scarlet for at least surviving her encounter with the invincible Shuma. After beating some of the fiercest villains in all of the universes, and all of the realities, and all of the dimensions, it seems the last one standing that still causes Scarlet Witch the most strife is the Scarlet Witch. Her main struggle is a never-ending internal one, stemming from the battle to keep her enormous reality-warping power in check. Her emotions set this power free, and if she's not careful and always keeping a watchful eye on her own mental state, she can accidentally erase the entire world. 
So as long as she doesn't try to take on a universe of villains all alone, and as long as she trusts in her friends and teammates, I really think Reality and Wanda Maximoff will continue on just fine. Unless, of course, Shuma gets bored of that game show.